Hey you all, and good morning. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south. More specifically, we are still in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Uh, came out here yesterday to, uh, to the main strip here, and everything was closed. There, there was just a few cars, just a few people walking down the street. All the stores had uh, signs up saying uh, closed for inclement weather. Now it's still cold, not as cold as yesterday. Still cold, there's still snow on the ground. And uh, I know a lot of times, um, you know what happens in these towns that are further south, these towns that don't get a lot of snow, sometimes when there is snow, it is much more of an inconvenience. They don't necessarily have an army of snow plows. Like I grew up northern Indiana, the first side of snow, there was snow plows, dropping salt, scraping roads, just a complete army making the city safe to pass. When it only snows, we only get a good snow every couple years, it's uh, not quite as necessary uh, or cost effective to have an army of snow plows. So I have not seen, I have not seen any snow plows in the, uh, the 48 hours that I've been here. Um, luckily, you know, it didn't snow enough to completely shut anything down. People could still get out. Unfortunately, as far as tourist things, as far as things that I'm interested in, uh, there wasn't a lot to offer uh, yesterday. A lot of these shops were closed down. A lot of uh, the attractions were shut down. But I thought uh, before we leave town, I wanted to come down here and check and uh, on a, a certain attraction. And I thought I thought I saw something going on up there when I. Uh, I drove past. Now I think the idea is um, I did not put out a poll on which city to go to because I think the best thing to do is to just get out of the cold, to get out of the snow, to head southeast and and get to a place where it's warmer, where more stuff's going to be open, where I'm not going to run the risk of getting trapped. But I did want to try to, I didn't want to make Hot Springs a total wash so I wanted to check and see if something was open today. So please, follow me. And you can see a lot more cars parked here along the main road. A lot more cars driving on the main road. I got my car parked right there. And uh, we're gonna walk down this way and, uh, and see if something's open. Here is the Ohio Club. This used to be a casino here. Right now, it looks like they serve food, cigars, and uh, and beer. And it talks about how uh, that uh, this was apparently a, a retreat for, um, yeah, this is the historic baseball trail. So it says major league players would like to come here and gamble during training trips. So I guess they would train for baseball here in Hot Springs. It says the most popular were the Southern Club and the Ohio Club. It says Al Capone, Lucky Luciano, Bugsy Seagull, and Frank Costello, and other mobsters frequented these clubs. So yeah, Hot Springs kind of a mobster mafia hotspot at uh, one point. And in fact, I don't know, maybe maybe mafioso guys, maybe they still like to come to Hot Springs, gamble a little bit at uh, the clubs, and then head over and take a nice hot bath at one of these bathhouses. And you can get some gangster photos taken, as well as some uh, some Western photos here at the Old Time Photo Shop. Unfortunately, it is closed today. A lot of the attractions still closed today, and uh, this this is a lot of fun. Um, you know the the uh, Wild West photos. Usually, they do not let you like film the process, which is kind of a, a bummer. But I definitely enjoy the Wild West photos. I think me and Jen need to get us a uh, Wild West photo taken somewhere in uh, somewhere in Gatlinburg. And there it is up ahead, Josephine Tussauds Wax Museum, the classic old school wax museum here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. I went by yesterday, it was closed, but as I drove by, I noticed they had these placards out front. They did not have these placards out front um, yesterday. It says free wine tasting here at the uh, Wax Museum. I think, 
I think it's open. Of course, Jose Josephine Tussaud is uh, is a relative of uh, of Madame Tussaud. A lot of the Tussaud family would open up their own wax museums. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 Louis Tussaud. Also, the, the whole Tussaud family like to get involved in the wax museum industry. Josephine here, was born in 1900 to 1985, and I noticed over in the corner here, you can't see her very well, but there looks like looks like that's Alice from Alice in Wonderland lurking back there. I've also got a slot machine and a roulette wheel there in the window. I know they do have some uh, some gangster history in here as well. And in the window, they have uh, George W. Bush and uh, George H. W. Bush. Just slightly, just slightly ironic because, you know, Hot Springs is the birthplace and childhood home of Bill Clinton, who was uh, president in between these two. But um, I don't see, he's not, he doesn't get to be here in the window. I don't know, maybe he's inside. We'll keep an eye out. For him, but uh, without further ado, let's uh, check out the wax museum. Oh, yeah, then greeted here in the lobby. Our first figure is Mr. Steve McQueen, looking super cool there on his uh, Honda motorcycle. This is one of the most ancient forms of art, is sculpture. So, centuries ago, beeswax became an integral part of the art form. So beeswax was the original wax used to make the wax figures and now we head into scene two which is stairway of the stars see this stairway takes us up to the top of the wax museum and there's the old escalator here i guess the former escalator that would take you to the uh the top here but is now adorned with movie stars oh yeah we have barack obama there let's see if we can get a peek here yeah the escalator of the stars there Barack Obama Jimmy Carter I think that's Clark Gable there behind them we'll walk up here and get a closer look Clark Gable and some of these I may need help with oh no I don't need help they have uh, helpful signs that's Mae West old-timey movie star and yeah that was Definitely Clark Gable. Although I was pretty sure my my uh, my grandmother, my father's mother, had a uh, framed picture of Clark Gable above uh, above her bed. So Mae West, we have uh, Elizabeth Taylor here, who is her her good friend. And that's Richard Burton. And I, you know, I admit I'll be the first one to admit I don't know the most about um about old timey movie stars maybe have to uh if, if jordan the lion was here i'm sure he would know who all these people were but um not necessarily my forte knowing all the old movie stars i know some but uh, again I'm, I'm glad they do have the uh the helpful sides there this is sophia sophia loren here we have louis armstrong he's uh going to town on that trumpet of his, blasting out some great blues tunes. This is a pretty amazing building, this old building here. You can see we've come almost to the top of the escalator of the stars. And who's here at the tippy top? None other than uh, Pope John Paul II. And he's up here at the top. Of course, we have all these different celebrities that we saw coming up. But he is the only holy man. And of course, he is here to introduce us to someone that he is very fond of. Jesus Christ, who is crucified here at the top of the escalator. We see him crucified there. And then we see one of the... One of the most uh, classic scenes in all of wax museums the last supper you can see all the uh, the apostles here there's simon 
Thaddeus Matthew, the Philip, right the there. There is uh, James the Elder the and Thomas. It reads, Jesus there, he doesn't he doesn't have a name tag because you know if, if anyone doesn't need a name tag it's definitely Jesus. Then uh, John. Oh you see Judas there. Judas has in his hands a sack of coins because he has been paid off to uh, to sell out Jesus. Which man what a what a lousy what a lousy thing to do, Judas. There's Peter there. Peter's got like a knife, a big knife. They're all eating like unleavened bread, but Peter is brandishing a knife for some reason. And then we have Andrew, James the Lesser. I wonder if James the Lesser ever uh, ever felt uh, lesser than, than James the Elder and Bartholomew here at the back. And then one more uh, of the religious tableaus. We have the Piata which is the famous pose of Mother Mary holding Jesus, which later became a very famous uh, sculpture. I love this tableau here. A very uh, fascinating, unique, and somewhat terrifying character in history. This is Carrie Nation. Now, uh, when, uh, when Prohibition was passed, when they outlawed alcohol, there was, uh, you know, groups of mostly women that were uh, setting out to, to ban alcohol. They were tired uh, of alcoholism from their husbands and boyfriends. And uh, Carrie Nation was a particularly militant uh, prohibitionist. She very much wanted alcohol to be eradicated from the face of the earth. But she didn't just protest. She didn't just peacefully protest. She would travel around with an axe she would storm in to bars and start smashing up the place. You can see the cards on the floor, the broken liquor bottles there. She was just absolutely wrecking havoc, terrifying everyone in the bar. You see most of the bar patrons have scattered, the bartenders nowhere to be found. We have this just poor, uh, poor terrified flapper here who doesn't know uh, doesn't know what to do and uh, I think she's just hoping that Miss Carrie Nations does not place that axe into her skull <laughs> yeah what a what a scene here I, I do like you know I like these local uh, and interesting characters these uh, these scenes that you don't necessarily see in every wax museum Carrie Nation a very very fascinating character you don't necessarily hear about her a lot or see her in a lot of different uh, museums. Now one interesting thing about this exhibit, you know, as interesting as Carrie Nation is, is that all the items in this exhibit, the furniture, the bottles, um, this is all part of the Southern Club, which this building served as the so Southern Club. This is, uh, you know, where all the gangsters vacationed here in Hot Springs. So some authentic artifacts in here from uh, from one of the notorious gangster clubs in uh, in in the country so pretty amazing yeah she seems she seems pretty amazed this bank here we have uh, the notorious James gang the uh, team of uh, Jesse James one of the most notorious outlaws of all time and his brother Frank James. I always wonder. I always feel bad for Frank James. Like, um, is he like the uh, the Garfunkel of the uh, of the uh, of the team? Is he the Daryl Oates of the team? You hear about Jesse James all the time, and only every once in a while do you hear about Mr. Frank James. But I'm sure, I'm sure he pulled his uh, his fair share. You know, I'm sure Frank there was just as bad an outlaw is his brother Jesse. Just wonder why Jesse gets all the all the fame and you never hear about uh, never hear about old Frank there. Frank James. Forgotten outlaw. And it's time to get very spooky. See the cemetery scene here we're coming upon. This is the Chamber of Horrors. 
So we're created here by uh, Alfred Hitchcock. And Alfred Hitchcock gives us a choice. He says, head this way into the chamber of horrors. And if anyone knows horrors, it is Alfred Hitchcock. But also, if that's too intense for us, we can do the horrors bypass. That way it takes us to a land free of horrors. But, um, I don't know, I, I, I can't say no. I can't say no to Mr. Hitchcock. I'm gonna have to go full horrors into the chamber of horrors. And this is, this is a very authentic chamber of horrors. You have uh, a lot of times, old chamber of horrors had a lot of like torture and things like that. You know, things, you know, most chamber of horrors now, it's like a bunch of movie monsters, but they have some truly horrific things like this pirate cage. And uh, that does not mean they do not have the monsters as we go through the cemetery here. Look who's lurking behind this, uh, behind this gravestone is none other than Frankenstein the monster, son of Frankenstein the scientist. Another gravestone there. Who's lurking there? Is that just like a, a zombie maybe popping out of that grave? And some sort of hideous wolf beast behind right there. Is this some sort of a hunchback here? I think maybe that is, uh, I don't know if that's the hunchback of Notre Dame. I think that may be one of uh, Dr. Frankenstein's assistants. He's digging up this, this grave here, maybe digging up someone for spare parts to help make a, uh, help make a Frankenstein. It's lurking out of the corner here. You gotta watch out, almost missed him. We have Mr. Uh, Count Dracula there lurking out uh, from behind his crypt with that maniacal look on his face. I think that's Count Dracula. Maybe it's not Count Dracula. I don't know. He does. I just noticed he doesn't have fangs. He's wearing a he's wearing a tuxedo, but uh, maybe he's just a very well dressed ghoul of some sort. Leave a comment in the comment section. Is this is this Dracula? Heading deeper into the chamber of horrors, and uh, look at these horrors here. Oh my goodness, that is some horror. Like I said. The Chamber of Horrors used to not just be a bunch of movie monsters. They used to just be some truly horrific things. Things that you didn't, you know, you didn't necessarily want your kids or your pregnant uh, women to see. Um, this guy's wearing some sort of torturous neck bracelet. He's also got maybe a broken nose, some scabs, a disgusting pustule on his forehead. This guy is... Uh, this guy's in rough shape too. These are all, all, all rough shape. This guy here has these scratches across his chest. And uh, I don't even know, I don't even know what's going on with that poor guy there. He's tortured by ants. You can see, um, yeah, he gets buried up to his waist and just letting ants crawl all over him. That seems pretty awful. I would definitely hate to be covered in, uh, in an army of ants. Yeah, just, that's, that's, that's pretty awful. Just being like bugs all over you where you can, uh, cannot escape. Yuck. This is a device known as the Algerian hook. And, um, I don't know if I need to explain it too much. Basically, they just put a big, uh, they put a big hook in you and, um, and it really, it really, it really stinks. It's really unenjoyable to have the big hook in you while you hang upside down. And here is the pendulum. Let's see, uh, pendulum swings back and forth, slowly, uh, slowly getting closer to uh, disinterring your bowels. I think it's, it's, it's almost like worse just waiting for the pendulum to come down than actually having the pendulum cut into you. What do they say? It's the only thing worse than a beating is waiting for a beating. All right, so I've returned to the 
entrance to the Chamber of Horrors. We braved the horrors, we saw things that we can never forget, things that will never leave our mind. We listened to Hitchcock, we went through the Chamber of Horrors, but I'm curious on what is the horror bypass? What, what non-horrific things do we see if we head to the horror bypass? We know this is full of horror, we know this is traumatizing, but let's see what horror-free things. Oh wait, it's actually kind of a creepy entrance for a horror bypass. So let's see the non-horror that awaits us at the end here. Well, I don't know. That kind of seems like horror. Um, I mean, I definitely could have picked less horrifying things than a man being shot in the back of the head. It's, it's, it's actually pretty, pretty horrific, pretty terrifying to see. This is probably could have fit into the Chamber of Horrors. Yeah, the assassination of uh, Abraham Lincoln, one of our most beloved uh, presidents there. His wife, Mary Todd, just trying to enjoy a play. Just trying to enjoy a play after a long, arduous war. And then John Wilkes Booth comes on here with that tiny gun, puts an end to a very mighty and important man. You know, at the National Museum of Health and Medicine, you can actually see the bullet that came out of that real gun, as well as see the chunks that came out of, uh, of Lincoln's head. Oh man, yeah. They, they promised me no horror, and they struck me with a pretty striking, uh, striking scene here. Man, turn around, Abe. It's, it, it, it won't watch out. Now it is time to enter the Hall of Battles. Napoleon's standing up there. He knows his way around a battle. He's won quite a few battles in his day. Quite a, kind, of, kind of actually very you know, one of the best at winning battles. I remember reading about him in history class, and he basically invented all new ways of, uh, of winning battles. Another man knowing a thing or two about winning battles, Mr. Uh, George Washington. Won enough battles to uh, create uh, the United States of America. So let's see what other battles lie within the Hall of Battles. Oh, there's our boy. It's uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Of course, he fought a few battles in his day. Went to the Spanish-American War. Went to uh, San Juan Hill on this horse. And of course, Teddy, you know, Teddy lived, lived uh, one of the most, the most wild, adventurous lives of any, any man, any American that, that is around. Just, just kind of the, uh, one of the uh, classic just lives that, uh, that any man uh, could live. Just a bigger, bigger than life, bigger than life man who did uh, bigger than life things. I do really love the artistic interpretation they have of the uh, Civil War. You can see we actually have this this tent that rotates on a uh, platform. You can see this is the Confederate side of the tent. And who is that coming out of the Confederate tent? None other than, none other than Robert E. Lee coming out of uh, of this side and as the turntable rotates we can hear it rotate a little bit there as it turns to reveal the other side of the tent we'll see who is in uh, in the other side and there you have it inside the inside the other opposite end of the tent we have you Ulysses S Grant. It looks like he's taking a little nap in his tent. So interesting, they almost make it look like they're coming out of the same tent, that they're two sides of a different coin. And um, and it's interesting, you know, they're both, both uh, were born in the United States of America. Um, they both fought for different reasons. But uh, yeah, it just shows the complexities and uh, of the Civil War. In a way, we're both coming out of the same tent. We both have our own visions of what we think we're fighting for, what we think is right. Probably sometimes separated from what those men at the top might actually think. But uh, in a way, we're both both fighting, both creating battles, fighting to the end in these horrific conflicts. When really, we could just be 
We could just be hanging out in the same tent. And again, this museum, not afraid, not afraid to get a little artsy. And uh, I really find this World War II display absolutely fascinating. You have this bombed out house, the wreckage here, like a civilian house bombed out in, um, in World War II. And just sitting amongst the wreckage, we have some of the men that are, for better or worse, you know, responsible for, uh, for how the war played out. You know, Winston Churchill here, we got the Allies just hanging out in the wreckage of this house. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, there's Charles de Gaulle there. In the back, <laughs> you have Joseph Stalin, which yeah, he was one of, he was one of our allies. He was a, he's a, not a good person. He's responsible for un, un, unspoken, just, just endless misery, death, just, 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 just caused great horror and, and, and strife in his time. But um, we, we teamed up with him. We, uh, we, we strategically allied with him in order to defeat um, a much more terrifying force at the time. And just interesting, I don't know, I just look at this, the, the wreckage of the house see the baby doll there on the floor, the record player, all the different wreckage just caused by normal people living their lives caught up in this war. And uh, you know, the men behind it don't often find themselves actually in the trenches like this, in the places where the devastation has been caused. So kind of an interesting juxtaposition. I find it very, very fascinating. See across the way here, it looks like a a record, uh, record player, and uh, if you look up above, there is a bathtub over the walkway there. I guess an extension of the wrecked house here. That bathtub up there. Now we follow the arrow, and this is discovery of hot springs. This is Hernando de Soto, the Spanish explorer, looking down at this hot springs, he says to himself, why is this puddle, why is this puddle so hot? He's like, I have discovered the world's hottest puddle. And then this Native American's like, yeah, I kind of, you know, we, we, we kind of knew this was here already. This is just, you know, this is something we, we all, we all knew about it. It's something, you know, we, we, you know, we're all very familiar. We always, sometimes we take baths in it. It's, you know, it's, it's been around forever. And he's like, yes. I discovered it. <laughs> These people have thrown some pennies there in uh, in the hot springs, but they didn't go in because that's not actually water. That's like a plastic, a plastic spring. Okay, here we go. I was mentioning Hot Springs, the home of Bill Clinton. He was born here in Hot Springs. He went to high school in Hot Springs, which is kind of funny, is that. Um, he always said that he was from a town called Hope, Arkansas, but um, I think that was playing a little, a little loose with the rules. I think saying that he was from a town called Hope was more inspiring than saying he was from uh, the town of Hot Springs. There's Hillary, uh, Hillary Clinton, his wife. She ran for president and uh, and did not win, but. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. I, I was surprised that uh, the two George Bushes were in the window, but not Bill Clinton. But I guess the Clintons have a nice little cozy nook here inside the museum. Now, they do not have a, uh, a Joe Biden figure. They don't have our current uh, US president. This is uh, the last president before Joe Biden, Donald Trump, which is a, uh, a wax figure, a person that, that, that draws strong emotions in different uh, people and entirely possible entirely possible he could be our uh, our next president as of uh, as of today i saw that he won the uh iowa primary so uh yeah yeah <laughs> whichever side of the fence you're on whichever your beliefs are it's it's going to be it's going to be an intense election cycle i think me myself i think i'm gonna Try, try to just, uh, try to, you know, not that I don't care, but, um, you know, I, I try not to get upset about politics anymore like I used to. I just, hopefully, uh, things will play out and, uh, 
we will see what happens together as a country. And again, they do not have the full president hall here. We don't get all the presidents, but we do get every, uh, every notable member of the Kennedy family. We've got John Kennedy back there, his wife, Jackie O, and uh, his brother Robert Kennedy, who, uh, who ran for president. Unfortunately, he was assassinated, both the brothers assassinated, which is you know, very, very devastating and very, very sad for American history. Then Edward Kennedy, also known as uh, Teddy Kennedy, is a long-serving uh, senator who uh, has, a, you know, people have mixed feelings on him. Um, some people like what he did in politics. Some question some of the things that happened um, on his way to get there. And interesting, this display in here known as the, uh, they refer to it as the Brothers of Destiny. It says empathy, compassion, vision were theirs. They swallowed defeat and they savored victory. So there we go, the Brothers of Destiny, which sounds like a pro wrestling, uh, a pro wrestling faction. We do have uh, some royalty in here, the Royal Realm. We enter the Grand Royal Hall, and um, yeah, right off the bat here, I will tell you guys, I don't, uh, uh, international history, um, I know some, I don't know everything, uh, fortunately they do give you the helpful name tags here, so uh, this is Prince Philip, he passed away recently, this is Elizabeth II, this is a very young Elizabeth II. You can see she looks almost in this, in this like she's the same age as Princess uh, Princess Di. So I guess these are uh, wax figures from different from different eras. There's Prince Charles, who I guess technically he's King Charles now because uh, his mother, uh, Queen Elizabeth, died. So he is the king. See, I know. I guess I know more than I thought I did. And here he is shaking hands with his good friend, Richard Nixon. Now, Richard Nixon here in the Royal Hall. So yeah, they do have a, a good smattering of presidents. And they did have some presidents out front too. They had uh, Barack Obama, they had uh, Jimmy Carter. But uh, Nixon, along with his wife, Pat, they are visiting uh, the Royal family up here, giving them a good, healthy American handshake. Here's some of the crown jewels here. It's the Imperial State Crown, Queen Mary's Crown, the Queen Mother's Crown, and uh, what is this here? Is this the uh, is this the Holy Hand Grenade of Antioch? Over here we have Henry VIII. And uh, when I look at the old school wax museum, it seems like at one point he was a very popular wax figure. It seems like with the old school wax museums, he was almost in every single wax uh, museum. I think definitely a, uh, a household name at one point. There's Anne Boleyn, which I believe is his, uh, his girlfriend. Here's Elizabeth I. Okay, so this is Elizabeth I right here. We have Elizabeth II here which was our most recent, uh, she was the most recent queen of England. So I'm guessing this was her, her mother here. And then, okay, I think you have some, uh, some French royalty over here. Louis the 16th and Marie Antoinette. Didn't she have her, um, didn't she have her head cut off at some point? Over here, Mr. Martin Luther King Jr. I was fortunate enough the other day to be able to go to the Lorraine Motel where he was assassinated, where they have transformed it into a civil rights museum and definitely just one of the most inspiring Americans. Just um, his, his methods, his way of doing things, just super, uh, 
super inspiring, super encouraging, and an example on how to make change in uh, in the right way. And for uh, for a lot of reasons, you know, you see him in almost every wax museum because he is one of the most important Americans out there. In this uh, tableau, I guess this is who you call like team team flight. You have the uh, Wilbur and uh, Orville Wright, the Wright brothers, just hanging out by some trees. Looks like they're dreaming of a day that they can fly. See, he's got his plans, his blueprints out, trying to come up with a plane that can make its way up into the air. And then uh, Charles Lindbergh would definitely appreciate their work as he uh, will become one of the most famous pilots, creating great feats of air travel in his uh, in his adventures. Then we take that one more step here to Mr. Neil Armstrong. There, getting ready. Got his uh, his spacesuit on, getting ready to head into space, which is possibly possibly the final frontier. I don't know, I guess maybe someday we can uh, get to another planet. I think that would be cool, but um, it's amazing. And when you think about like the, uh, the short amount of time that passed between, uh, between all these people, I think it's less than a hundred years we went from two guys just thinking maybe we could make an airplane someday to uh, flying in an airplane and then getting to the moon that that's pretty remarkable that says a lot about ingenuity and um, how we can get things done if we truly uh, truly put our minds to it yeah I actually just looked it up because uh, uh, it fascinated me but it was literally 66 years so someone in their in their lifetime could see airplanes fly for the first time, airplanes become a regular part of everyday life, and then a man literally landing on the moon all within 66 years. People saw that in their lifetime. Here we have the master of the atomic age, Mr. Albert Einstein. And uh, what a fascinating man. You know, we all know one of the smartest human beings to ever live, but um, just very interesting how he lived his life. It's very, 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 very almost Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He was actually really sad, notoriously horrible to his wife. He, uh, he treated his wife like, like, like garbage, like almost made her serve as his servant and refused to give her even the slightest bit of affection or love. But um, publicly, you know, did, a, did, a, did some amazing things. He was a pacifist, even though, um, you know, even though he was tied in with making the, the atomic bomb, he was a strict pacifist. He, uh, he stood up, you know, what was for right, what was right as far as World War II goes. Just an endlessly complicated man, a man that cannot be just uh, wrapped up into a neat little bow like you often see him, uh, see him as done. Kind of an eerie little reception desk here. But then down at the end of the hallway, you see the crooning Mr. Elvis Presley. Yeah, one of the most beloved uh, musicians of all time. Definitely some good songs. I've uh, I've enjoyed some Elvis songs over the years, and I do notice this Elvis here wearing the TCB necklace. Of course, we all know the TCB stands for the Carpet Bagger. And next to Elvis here. We have uh, another room that talks about the history of this building as the Southern Club. You can see the original roulette wheels here that were used for gambling in uh, in this very building. The Southern Club used by Mafioso, used by uh, Al Capone, Bugsy Siegel, Lucky Luciano. Just crazy when you think about the people that have gambled here. And it says this bathroom in here was original to the 
to the day that the Southern Club opened. So it's entirely possible Al Capone could have uh, defecated on that toilet. Just, just wild. You think about the people that were here gambling and things that must have happened within these walls. But we leave the land of gangsters and enter the world of make believe. Now, this is one of my favorite sections to the Louis Tussauds Wax Museum. If you look down in the pit there, you see Rumple Stillskin at work. He was, uh, he could turn straw into gold. Just take that, the, the straw, the hay there, and turn it to gold. He uh, did it in, in exchange, he made it be a unholy deal with the miller's daughter. She wanted to marry the king, so he agreed to spin straw into gold to help her impress the king. The only, only catch was uh, she had to give him her first child, unless, uh, unless she guessed his name. And eventually, through some detective work, she figured out that he was Rumpelstiltskin. Um, so, so I'm glad she got to keep the baby, although she did kind of like cheat him on the deal there. The main thing I'm concerned about is what did Rumpelstilts what, what, what was Rumpelstiltskin going to do with the baby? That that still haunts me to this day. Another artistic interpretation. We have Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer's, the two rascals, going on adventures alongside the Mississippi River, and then over here we see. Their creator, Mr. Mark Twain. You can see somehow Mark Twain has taken his thoughts, his stories, and turned them into reality. Has created, taken his fictional characters and watched them become real. And uh, that is known as, as creating a tulpa, when you can take a fictional thought and manifest it into the real world. So there is Mark Twain with his tulpas, Huck Finn, and Tom Sawyer. See, Tom. Tom's all dressed up nice. He's got his apple there. Huck Finn, a little, uh, little more rascally. He's got his corn cob pipe tucked there. I guess they're gonna, gonna white. Oh, he's white, white washing the fence there. Yeah, these two rascals up to no good. You keep them in line. You keep them in line, Mark. Some piratey music coming from this corner. Oh, okay, we got Mr. Uh, Jack Sparrow playing some, uh, some uh, playing a little, little bit of Pirate's Life for me. Further into the world of make believe, this is Cinderella here. I can tell because she has a pumpkin coach. It's even got a C on the side for Cinderella. And I do like how the pumpkin coach has uh, has uh, tail lights on it. That's actually very helpful. Because so if that's Cinderella. And this must be the uh, fairy godmother granting uh, granting all the wishes she needs in order to get that prince. Here is Geppetto's toy shop where the puppet maker Geppetto seeks to uh, create himself a son. He has not been able to make a son the traditional way, so he has made a puppet son, a marionette son, and. Uh, Got a button here. Let's push the button. Oh, there you go. We just watched the pushing the button. We just allowed Pinocchio to come to life there. See him move his arms. We all go a little bit mad here. See the mad tea party Alice over there having a cup of tea. The March Hare, the Mad Hatter, these crazy fellas here uh, having a having a probably a merry merry unbirthday. This is a you know a chaotic event, not a simple relaxing tea party. It's the Dormouse there, and yeah, nothing nothing in Wonderland can just go smoothly. Everything has to be a chaotic. Nightmare. And the villains of Wonderland, the Queen of Hearts there, as well as the uh, the King of Hearts. Something about these two figures. I think these these probably run as probably probably up there as two of the most terrifying wax figures that have ever ever 
than made. You guys agree? I, it's just something about these features. <laughs> also over here, some sort of cat-like creature hiding in this uh, in this trash can. This almost looks like a like a carnival game where the lid goes up and down and you throw the balls to try to get it into the trash can. All right, as we head over the bridge here under the waterfall. Oh, look at that bird there. Little bird peeking up. Oh, and I think, is that, I think it looks like it might be an old fog machine there. I guess they don't, maybe don't have the fog effect anymore. There's another casino exhibit in here. They have different items from the casinos in uh, Hot Springs. Yeah, here's some things from the Southern Club. Again, the Southern Club is uh, the building that we are currently in, the building that was turned into the, uh, into the Josephine Dussaud's uh, Wax Museum. Oh, there's some loaded dice. I guess those are specifically meant for cheating. When you look at that, it has the white dots and then two of the dots look almost like they're metal. I guess maybe that would automatically uh, determine where the dice would uh, would land. Yeah, lots of gambling things in here. Bingo cards. There's decks of cards. Different uh, different match matches from all the different casinos. It looks like they may have played a lot of bingo here. Oh, here's the. Uh, Here's the uh, Hot Springs Illegal Casinos. This is all their, uh, all the different poker chips from those casinos. Here's the Southern Club Casino, uh, Southern Club chips. Again, where we are right now. We also saw the Ohio Club as we were walking here. Yeah, look at those dice. I look how like, the dice are like wrapped up in the foil there. There's some uh, slot machines here would have been used for gambling. And these, I guess a cage there full of dice to, to roll and get a number. I think this would be like a bingo, bingo tumbler there. That's yeah, pretty fascinating. The, uh, the gambling history here, Hot Springs. Oh yeah, some more machines up there on top. Here's an original blackjack table from the uh, Southern Club with uh, the dealer, none other than Al Capone there, dealing a few hands of, uh, of blackjack. You'd trust that man, wouldn't you? That's a trustworthy face. Now this is absolutely crazy. You can take a peek out the window here, and apparently the story here is there was actually a landslide that destroyed a portion of the Southern Club, and um, part of the portion that was buried in the landslide was the safe. The safe was loaded with cash and buried under an avalanche, so they had to dig out this safe here, and you can see how it's been uh, punctured and opened up to get all the money out there. So just imagine, the avalanche hits the casino and, and takes out the safe. What is more important in the casino than the big safe full of money? You can imagine the frantic digging out of this safe. It's probably had millions and millions of dollars inside. Almost became a little bit of buried treasure here in Hot Springs. Here we have Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Right here with the dwarf Happy. And man, that, you can't deny it, that is a happy dwarf. He's happy because he found all these, uh, all these gems and diamonds right here. Let's make sure all the, uh, all the dwarves are here. You can see them on their mine cart twirling around. Let's see, who's that? That is... Uh, he's smiling. He's not happy though. Um, that's bashful. He's got a bashful look on his face. I think he's gonna sneeze. That might be sneezy. Uh, who's that? Where's Grumpy? I, I don't know if I saw Grumpy. That's not Grumpy. He's got too big of a smile. 
Maybe that's grumpy. I don't know, help me out here. Who do you think, which dwarf is which? Is that, is that grumpy? Oh man, I'm, uh, now I'm starting to doubt myself on all these. Who knew that dwarves could be so hard to uh, tell apart? See, that guy's got a big smile, but he's not happy. I mean, he may be happy, but he's not the dwarf happy. These ones don't have their, uh, have their name tags. There is some dwarves over here. That is Dopey and Sleepy. They're sitting here with a, uh, with a little, very tiny deer. That deer is so tiny, I imagine that must be a stillborn taxidermy deer with them. So we have Dopey and Sleepy. Dopey, Sleepy, Happy. Um, dopey, Sleepy, Happy, Bashful, Sneezy. Uh, I'm gonna say, I was gonna say that's grumpy, but he doesn't look grumpy. I'm, I'm completely lost here. If anyone wants to help out in the comment section, leave, uh, let me know which dwarves are which. Now it is time to exit through the gift shop. Some t-shirts here. I don't see any that say Josephine Toussaint's, but this says the Southern Club Gambling Museum, which I guess is a portion of the uh, of the uh, Josephine Toussaint's museum. We definitely saw uh, several sections talking about the Southern Club and gambling. Here's the wine tasting section. It says the Southern Club's last pour. So I guess you can sample a little bit of wine. I guess they sell the uh, Southern Club brand wine here at the Wax Museum. All right, we're gonna do a little wine tasting here. Now, apparently this is the original recipe served in this building, just like Al Capone <laughs> used to drink. And apparently it is a wine shine. So part wine and part moonshine. All right, when in Rome. Ooh, that's yeah, definitely wine, but it's got a little, got a little kick to it as well. We got a penny. Smasher here. We can get souvenir smashed pennies, and this is one of the uh, one of the old school ones. One where you have to provide uh, your own penny. Put some quarters in there, and then um, we got a nice shiny penny to put in here. So I guess uh, choices here are the uh, you get the duck. It says, I love you from Hot Springs, uh, Barack Obama, or uh, Josephine Toussaint's Magic World. I don't know if that was maybe like the former name. I know it's currently called Josephine Toussaint's Wax Museum. I'll have to look into that, where that Magic World name comes from, but I think that's the one I'm getting, the Josephine Toussaint. So we're gonna wind it up so we get the, we gotta line up the one you want with the red dot, but uh, insert these. Penny should be dropped in there, and then we will turn it, and you can, yeah, you can feel the resistance, feel that you're actually using your own strength to crush the penny. And there it is. Well, it actually has kind of a interesting shape to it. It does say, you could say, uh, Hot Springs. You can see where it says, uh, Josephine Tussauds. And we have a palm reader here. Alexander, the man who knows, let him tell you what you should be. So apparently he tells you what job you should take. And you know, if this whole YouTube thing doesn't work out, <laughs> if, uh, end up uh, getting stranded in the snow where I can't make videos. I need to find a backup plan. So I'm going to put the quarter in there. Insert that. Put my hand there. And Alexander is going to pick my new profession, musician. Now that's possibly the worst possible choice. I have no musical talent. I um, worked in a restaurant once and I was banned 
from clapping along with the birthday song because my lack of rhythm threw off all the other waiters and waitresses. So possibly the worst option for a job I could possibly have. You know, I believe, Alexander, I believe you're the man that knows, but you know what? You don't know me. And then behind the backs of the uh, Bush presidents, we shall exit. Yeah, I didn't notice this coming in, but you can see on the marquee, it says Josephine Tussauds Wax Museum on the side, but in the center, it says the famous Southern Club Gambling Museum. See the escape tunnel to talk about though, where the safe was, uh, was buried. But uh, yeah, this is the Southern Club. This is building has so much history. Um, of course, this wax museum is such an old school wax museum. You don't just don't see wax museums like this. This is a treasure here in Hot Springs. So happy. Um, I didn't think I'd get to see it. It was closed yesterday. I'm so happy that they decided to open up today. Uh, definitely love this museum and definitely recommend anyone in uh, Hot Springs to check this out. Step into the past, see what wax museums used to look like, and then uh, see the history here in this building, this old, uh, this old uh, Prohibition era casino where the, uh, where the mobsters came to, uh, to get away from it all and, uh, and gamble their money away. So yes, an absolute treat that I did not leave here with hot springs up to hand. It's so ha happy that I did get a chance to, uh, to see the, uh, the, the wax museum here again, just like that kind of wax museum you don't see anymore. Uh, you see, you know, the new wax museums full of celebrities. I love new wax museums, but they're full of celebrities. They're more about selfies. I love the old school um, artistic tableaus they have in these classic wax museums. But now it is time to leave the great city of Hot Springs. I'm about ready to, to, to walk back to my car and, uh, and head southeast. I don't even really know where I'm headed. Um, I think I'm just gonna get in the car and head southeast and uh, we will see where we wind up. I guess I'll just drive until until I'm away from the cold and uh, then we'll get a we'll get a hotel uh, hopefully get a good night's sleep and then we will uh, we will readjust and uh, reevaluate things in the morning. It's still very, very cold here. <laughs> Stopped off here at Bill Clinton Park. And uh, for whatever reason, that's uh, up on top of the hill. That's not Bill Clinton. Um, the name of this park is Bill Clinton Park, as he is from uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. But I don't necessarily see any statuary or anything denoting the Bill Clinton just this random guy up here who's not Bill Clinton. And it looks like uh, the fountain here has uh, frozen into this towering stalagmite that's uh, shooting water skyward. And here next to Bill Clinton Park, I guess is the ultimate hot spring souvenir. They actually have these public fountains where you can take some of the water with you for free. See the button here? That is hot, that's really hot and warm. It feels very good on this cold day. Now I saw several gentlemen uh, come by with coolers and buckets and just filled up. I think one guy had like six buckets and filled up his car with this water. I'm not sure exactly what the benefits of this are. Um, it was saying over here that at one point it was thought to be like a health elixir, but it did not elaborate on what sort of health uh, it helped you with. But I figure, uh, you know, when in Rome, we will uh, maybe go get ourselves some uh, some uh, hot spring water to take with us. I was trying to find a bottle to put uh, the hot water in. All I could find was this Diet Pepsi, <laughs> this Diet Pepsi bottle. Uh, so we'll get us some uh, get us some hot water here. So speaking to another gentleman over there, and he said that uh, part of the reason people come and take it is that it's just good, clean spring water so they don't have to buy bottled water they can just fill up 
uh, and, and take it home and, uh, and drink it. He said it's good, delicious water to drink. He did warn me, you gotta let it cool first or you will, you will scald your throat. So I'm gonna wash out this Pepsi bottle. I'll fill this up, I'll put it in my cooler, and then we will, uh, we will try it a little later. All right, so we'll clean out. There's a little bit of, a little bit of Pepsi still in there, so get that, get that cleaned out. Get the impurities of the Pepsi out of the bottle. Whoops, sorry. Do one more cleaning. And then we'll fill this up with the delicious spring water. We'll give it a little taste while it's still hot. That's hot. I don't really care for the taste of hot water, so. Oh! Alright. So we're gonna seal that up and we'll put that in our cooler. And we'll try it when it gets cold. See if that's some good uh, good water here from Hot Spring. It's so warm. I could cuddle with that. Oh my gosh. You fill that out and like put it in your jacket before you walk around town here to keep you warm. All right, we'll throw it here in the Yeti. Get that cooled down and save that as a, just a little treat for later. We have a plow. Someone is doing a little bit of plowing. I don't know if that's a city plow or just uh, a good Samaritan doing a little plowing here in uh, Hot Springs. It's a bar and grill named after one of Arkansas's most famous residents. See a roller coaster over there to the left. That is uh, the Magic Springs Amusement Park. Maybe someday have to come by in the warmer weather and check that out for myself. Yeah, out here on the highway, you can definitely see some uh, plows hard at work getting this road clear for uh, for travelers. Oops. Come down here to uh, downtown Little Rock, Arkansas, where yes, it actually is quite snowy <laughs> down here as well. I uh, came into the city, wanted to grab a little something to eat. So I figured he'd stop over here at a place that I do enjoy, the flying fish here. Let's uh, see if we can get a little bit of fish for lunch. Uh, now, uh, while I love the food here at the uh, Flying Fish, I really love the ambiance. They have a Billy Bass adoption program here. Now, there's other Flying Fish restaurants, and the Flying Fish in Memphis actually has a fish that I donated. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to stop by and say hello to my fish when I was in Memphis, but uh, we can enjoy the uh, Billy Bass donated here, the flying fish in Little Rock. Remember when these were like a big, major, a home decorative item, they would sing. Yeah, I don't think they sing, but you can see people have donated, they've left their names underneath. And uh, I do like to go visit mine in Memphis. I actually kind of sad I didn't have a chance to stop by. Mixed in, we've got some actual real fish there with some wings on them. Certain people decorate decorate their uh, fish with uh, special accoutrements. Looks like someone has went and put crackers in a lot of the fish's mouths here. There's another real fish there. Yeah, just look at the uh, all the uh, all the Billy Bass here. 
some different kinds too. You got, uh, what is this, like a rainbow trout maybe? There's a shark that's jaws. And I think that's some sort of catfish there. This one is uh, a deceased fish skeleton. And this one, this is actually one, looks like the one that I donated to the Memphis location. This uh, blue one. I need to get another one to donate to uh, this Little Rock location. There's an Oscar Mayer Wienermobile <laughs> bass here. And some of the ones up there are decorated uh, very elaborately. I think one's wearing a tutu there. It looks like this one over here maybe was celebrating Mardi Gras. There is a lobster up there. Now I do have one of those lobsters in the bunker. Maybe I should have donated that. Oh, look at this. Yeah, the world's first Billy Bass adoption uh, center. Even though there are, I think, three separate <laughs> Billy Bass adoption centers, they all say they are the uh, world's first. Here's a decorated one. We got like a, uh, like he's laying on the beach, enjoying himself there. And there's a lot of them. A lot of them do have Santa hats on. Did they release a Billy Bass Christmas version maybe at some point? This one's kind of unique looking. He's, uh, this one looks a little ragged. And they do have quite a few lobsters. I wish I would have brought my lobster here to, uh, to donate. Down over here, oh, it's got full-sized, full-sized shark. I hear some more of the uh, flesh and blood fish. Of course, these all are adorned with wings as they fly through the sky. So there's a lot of fishing photos, people that have caught fish and put their uh, photos on the wall here. It says, this is Flying Freddy, a flying fish that is caught May 30th of 1960, so this was caught in an electric bug zapper. You imagine, uh, my grandma had one of those that zapped all the mosquitoes. I guess this poor flying fish flew into a, a bug zapper. You can see this one's got some bright colors on it. So I ordered the Snapper Veracruz, and oh my goodness, got the whole Snapper there. Got some rice, beans, some vegetables. It's like some uh, tomato and veggies there. This thing, this is a massive, this is a massive fish. I'm gonna do my best to uh, to consume this. Oh my goodness, I can't get over this. Can you guys see how big that fish is? Oh my, I'm, ex I'm excited to try this looks delicious piece of the piece of the fish there Ooh, very hot mm. really low the fish on the bone is something special you got like a whole fish like this a little bit of tartar sauce, a little bit of cocktail here. You would uh, enjoy the fish. Mm. Try some of that, some of the cocktail there. It's all good. Mm. I really like the cocktail sauce here. Some rice and beans. A bit of zucchini. Some to tomatoes and peppers. Mmm, it's like a warm, spicy this bowl of olives in it. Peppers, tomatoes, amazing. Mmm, cool. The heat gets in the back of the throat there. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely a wonderful meal here. The cocktail sauce and oh my what a meal that was I think this counts as a clean plate 
All that's left is some fish bones and a and a fish head. I think, uh, the, I think I've eaten all the meat that I possibly can off the fish, and man, that was absolutely delicious. Oh my goodness, look at all the salt on my car. This must have been by from driving by the uh, the snow plows outside of uh, Hot Springs. I'm gonna have to uh, get a car wash at some point. I guess I gotta wait till I'm in warmer weather to get a uh, to get a car wash, otherwise that would just freeze my car solid. What a, what a salty car. Yeah, just to ensure we have some uh, visibility. Oh no, you can see the wiper fluid there is frozen. That's not good, I was gonna clear off the windshield here so I at least could see a little better. Oh. Not a lot of luck there. Oh, it snapped off. It froze and snapped off. I found these Windex wipes in the floorboard of my car. I don't know if this is gonna be exactly what I need, but at least maybe we can try to just get the windows a little clear until we get to some uh, some warmer weather. All right. Ah, not terrible. Ew, look at that. Continue to travel south. We're hitting more snow. The, the snow has not completely disappeared yet, and some spots have way more snow than others. But uh, keep uh, moving forth and hoping that we can put put all this snow behind us. And you can see there's still a lot of snow and ice on the road. We're well within Mississippi now is kind of shocking. I, I definitely did not expect this bad weather this far south. And we have landed in Jackson, Mississippi, where I've gotten my uh, hotel room for the evening. And look at that. That is that is snow right there. Um, I, it has been snowy the entire way from Hot Springs, Arkansas to Jackson, Mississippi. I was not expecting there to be snow this uh, this far south. It can't possibly snow that often here in uh, here in Jackson, Mississippi. We're, we're pretty pretty far south here. Look at the snow and ice here in the parking lot. Super slippery and slick. And see, yeah, just look out in the middle of the street. See, in the middle of the street, there's a huge right across from the Whataburger there. There's a huge ice slick. Of course, this is what I've been driving over the entire way here. These roads covered in ice and snow. Luckily, I haven't seen any uh, accidents. Slow down there, buddy. It's ice you're driving on. Um, it's just pretty wild. It is. It is very cold. Um, Another patch of ice and snow down there. Just not, uh, not was not expecting the ice and snow to uh, follow me all the way here to uh, Jackson, Mississippi. I cannot believe how cold it is. I just checked the weather 
on my phone. It is 16 degrees outside here in um, in Jackson, Mississippi. The front desk staff was all bundled up in their coats. They did not know. Uh, they, I asked. They, I asked. They, they said it doesn't normally snow like this, and they said no, it does not. So I am trying. My plan today was to to outrace the storm to get away from the storm to head south. So far I've failed. The storm has managed to keep up with me. The winter storm. Hopefully maybe tomorrow we go a little further and get away from this brutal winter storm. I can only imagine if it is 15 degrees in Jackson or 16 degrees in Jackson, Mississippi, what the temperature must be like in some of the other parts of the country. It's just crazy, like up north, up out west. It's just... But I did bring a treat up to the hotel room with me. This is not Crystal Pepsi. This is the spring water from Hot Springs, Arkansas. I put it in my cooler. It's nice and cold now. So let's crack this. Crack this open. Let's see if it No, it's good. It's good. Definitely clean, pure water. This certainly doesn't have any of like the the chemically taste of like tap water. I don't really like like uh, city water that much, or city water with like a lot of like I can I can always taste like the fluoride and stuff in there. Um, so that doesn't taste like that overly processed city water. Just has a good, nice flavor. No weird minerals or anything like that. So, big thumbs up to the Hot Springs, Arkansas spring water. Mmm. Man, I should have stocked up. Should have, uh, I think the guy in front of me had like seven buckets of it. I, I understand why. Some good water. Should have, yeah, should have filled up a whole, uh, whole 12 pack of of Diet Pepsi bottles but um, all right yeah tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna keep going keep going southeast I think try to get away from the snow um, thank you guys so much for following along with me I know this is a little chaotic the last couple days trying to uh, find stuff to film find things to do in the middle of all this um, but I appreciate it and thank you for sticking with me uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, other fun stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider uh, contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and doing personalized messages on Cameo. Information for all those things is in the description of this video. And of course, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Think warm thoughts, and until next time, this one's in the bag.